Okay, we are starting off with question by defense attorney. <clears throat> ever mail a VAC card? No, I didn't. For the purposes of our record, the card will be marked Respondents A for identification card, <coughs> being the birthday card with some handwriting and drawing. Mrs. Klieger, are you requesting that the court award you sole physical custody? Yes, I am. With monitored visitation to your husband? Yes. Subject to him having psychological evaluation? Yes. Do you think you can agree on a monitor? I hope so, yes. I have no further questions. Do you have a motion on the card? Are you offering the card in evidence at this time? Yes, I am. I will again object, Your Honor, to the admission of the card on the basis of lack of proper foundation. We have no one who can actually authenticate the card, even though Mrs. Klieger claims her daughter signed the card. She did not see her draw the picture. I understand. I believe that then goes to the weight, not the admissibility. You have the opportunity to cross-examine. The birthday card presently marked as Respondents A for identification will be received in evidence and so marked. You may inquire. Mrs. Klieger, you indicated that after the first three-week visitation with your child <coughs> that she showed awareness of her vaginal area. Is that correct? So the first three-week session was not three weeks, it was two. Well, after the session with her father, however long it was, after the first custody session with her father, you indicated that she showed an awareness of her vaginal area. Is that true? Yes. Had Sarah ever before shown any curiosity or awareness about her body? No. Had Sarah ever had any type of vaginal infection or irritation or rash of any nature? When she was about eight months old, never after that? No, okay. Did you ever discuss the subject of sex with Sarah? No. Did you ever discuss the parts of her body with her? Yes, all right. And what's the terminology that Sarah normally used for that particular part of her body? Her bottom or vagina. If I were to tell you that Sarah has some seeming fear of bubble baths, could you give me an explanation for that? Yes, why? When I was living, when I was with my cousin, she put her in, I don't know, in her tub that has a jacuzzi in it. We filled it up with bubbles and she got frightened because it came up to the top of her head. It doesn't have anything to do with any irritation being caused by bubble bath. I don't bathe her with bubble bath. It's, it's known that bubble baths does cause irritation, especially cheaper brands. What type of nightmares does Sarah have? She has several nightmares. Can you tell us what they are? She has one of a car accident and someone laying dead on the road. Sometimes it's her dad, sometimes it's my mother. Has Sarah ever shown any curiosity about your body? No. She never tried to look under your dress? No. She never asked you about why your body is shaped differently than hers. Anything of that nature? Yes. And what did you tell her? I told her it's a part of becoming a woman. When she gets older, the same will happen to her. Did you ever catch Sarah trying to look through the bathroom keyhole? No, I don't have a keyhole. Did you ever see Sarah or ever observe Sarah? Ever trying to observe you in the nude? Yes, Sarah has seen me in the nude. Okay. You and your husband had a great deal of difficulty over custody and visitation with Sarah. Haven't you? Lately? Yes. As a matter of fact, it goes back clear to last year, doesn't it? No. Didn't you, in November of last year, take Sarah in violation of a court order and go to New Jersey? I was not served with a court order not to go to New Jersey. I asked the court to take judicial notice of a proof of service filed at that time, November 1983. The court will take judicial notice of the document in the court's file. Was there not, in fact, a warrant issued for your arrest? When I came back to California, I went to finish my divorce and I noticed there was a warrant in the file at that time. All right. Object to the relevancy sustained. Could I say something, Your Honor? I don't think it's advisable. If I can make an offer of proof, we are talking about, sir, a condition which must have existed or been created after July. And that's all we are talking about. I have already indicated I know these parents are angry at each other. 
With all due respect to the court, Your Honor, I think there's more to it than that. I am sure there is a lot more to it. Please move on. Yes, Your Honor. I don't plan on discussing their parents or their parents' parents. All I want to know is about this allegation. Mrs. Cleaver, when was the first time that you made an allegation that Mr. Cleaver might be molesting your daughter? The first time was she spent a weekend with her father and came back and told me that she was sleeping with her father and did not have her own bed. What's the date? Must be back in March or April. There is a letter from Dr. from Tom Guyton in the file, I believe. So there is no question pending, ma'am. What year? This year. March or April of 1984. Yes. <clears throat> question by defense attorney. On top, does that say dad? Yes. Is that Sarah's handwriting? Yes. I gave her a piece of paper to say, daddy, I love you, Sarah. Objection. No question pending. Sustained. I would now like to offer this card in evidence as respondents one. Same objection as before, Your Honor. No foundation for this card. Objection overruled. The card will be received as respondents A. In evidence. Thank you, Your Honor. Now that it's in evidence, may I see it, Your Honor? I am sorry, sir. I assumed you had already seen it. I thought I had shown it to you, counsel. Well, pending examination by counsel. So the court will take the objection under submission. Withdraw its earlier ruling. There may be other grounds. We will have to hear them. Did you ever mail that card? No, I didn't. For the purposes of our record, the card will be marked Respondents A for identification. Card being the birthday card with some handwriting and a drawing. Mrs. Cleaver, are you requesting that the court award you sole physical custody? Yes, I am. With monitored visitation to your husband? Yes. Subject to him having psychological evaluation? Yes. Do you think you can agree on a monitor? I hope so. Yes. I have no further questions. Do you have a motion on the card? Are you offering the card in evidence at this time? Yes, I am. I will again object, Your Honor, to the admission of the card on the basis of lack of proper foundation. We have no one who can actually authenticate the card, even though Mrs. Cleaver claims her daughter signed the card. She did not see her draw the picture. I understand. I believe that then goes to the weight, not the admissibility. You have the opportunity to cross-examine. The birthday card presently marked as Respondent's A for identification will be received in evidence and so marked. You may inquire, Mrs. Cleaver, you indicated that after the first three-week visitation with your child that she showed awareness of her vaginal area. Is that correct? That the first three-week session was not three weeks, it was two. Well, after the session with her father, however long it was, after the first custody session with her father, you indicated that she showed an awareness of her vaginal area. Is that true? Yes. Has Sarah ever before shown any curiosity or awareness about her body? No. Has Sarah ever had any type of vaginal infection or irritation or rash of any nature when she was about eight months old? Never after that? No. Okay. Did you ever discuss the subject of sex with Sarah? No. Did you ever discuss the parts of her body with her? Yes, all right. And that's the terminology that Sarah normally used for that particular part of her body, her bottom or vagina. If I were to tell you that Sarah has some seeming fear of bubble baths, could you give me an explanation for that? Yes, why? When I was living, when I was with my cousin, she put her in, I don't know, in her tub that has a jacuzzi in it. We filled it up with bubbles and she got frightened because it came up to the top of her head. It doesn't have anything to do with any irritation being caused by bubble bath. I don't bathe her with bubble bath. It's, it's known that bubble baths does cause irritation, especially cheaper brands. What type of nightmares does Sarah have? She has several nightmares. Can you tell us what they are? She has one of a car accident and someone laying dead on the road. Sometimes it's her dad, sometimes it's my mother. Has Sarah ever shown any curiosity about your body? No. She never tried to look under your dress? No. She never asked you about why your body is shaped differently than hers? Anything of that nature? Yes. And what did you tell her? I told her it's part of becoming a woman. When she gets older, the same will happen to her. Did you ever catch Sarah trying to look through the bathroom keyhole? No. I don't have a keyhole. Did you ever see Sarah or ever observe Sarah ever trying to observe you in the nude? Yes. Sarah has seen me in the nude. Okay. 
You and your husband had a great deal of difficulty over custody and visitation with Sarah, haven't you? Lately, yes. As a matter of fact, it goes back clear to last year, doesn't it? No. Didn't you, in November of last year, take Sarah in violation of a court order and go to New Jersey? I was not served with a court order not to go to New Jersey. I asked the court to take judicial notice of a proof of service filed at that time, November 1983. The court will take judicial notice of the document in the court's file. Was there not, in fact, a warrant issued for your arrest? When I came back to California, I went to finish my divorce, and I noticed uh, there was a warrant in the file at that time. All right, object to the relevancy, sustained. Could I say something, Your Honor? I don't think it's advisable. If I could make an offer of proof, we are talking about Surrey condition, which must have existed or been created after July, and that's all we are talking about. I have already indicated I know these parents are angry at each other. With all due respect to the court, Your Honor, I think there is more to it than that. I am sure there is a lot more to it. Please move on. Yes, Your Honor. I don't plan on discussing their parents or their parents' parents. All I want to know is about this allegation. Mrs. Klieger, when was the first time that you made an allegation that Mr. Klieger might be molesting your daughter? The first time was she spent a weekend with her father and came back and told me that she was sleeping with her father and did not have her own bed. What's the date? Must be back in March or April. There is a letter from a doctor from Tom Guyton in the file, I believe. There is no question pending, ma'am. What year this year? March or April of 1984, yes. And at that time, you expressed your concern to your attorney, Mr. Guyton. Isn't that correct? I did. And subsequent to that, you didn't make any further allegations of molestation to anybody for some time, did you? Objection. Assuming facts not in evidence, saying she wanted the child to have her own bed is not an allegation of molestation. I am sorry, I will have to have the question. Objection overruled. <clears throat> Okay, <coughs> today is the fifth. 200, four boys, 15 minutes, direct by plaintiff's attorney. Ready? Mr. Bland, on May 12, 1972, were you the night foreman at Plasmet Engineering Company? Yes, and to your side on the board is a diagram marked People's One. Does that represent a rough sketch of the layout of this company? Yes. What time did you come on duty on May 12? Oh, 3.30. And how late did you stay? To 11.30. This is in the afternoon? Yes. Where is most of your work done? Outside of the plant? Actually, about 30 feet from the main office, then you do not work in that area which is composed of the offices and the lobby area. Is that correct? Well, no, but a lot of the times I am in the office. Now, what kind of things are made in the factory part? Excuse me? What is made in the factory part? It's custom molding for radios, TVs, things like that. Do you have a lot of machines going there in the evening? Yes, ma'am. Is it noisy? Very noisy. You have a little plant office on that diagram. Is that an office that you use? Yes, ma'am. On May 12, about how many people were there in the evening time working? Well, there was me and four other girls. And where do they do their business? They just operate the machines. They stay in the factory area of the plant, right? Sometime on May 12 in the evening, did you leave the factory area of the plant and walk into the hallway where the offices are located? Yes, ma'am. About what time? Oh, approximately 9, 9.15. What kind of lighting did you have in the hallway on that night? Well, there was just a hall light. Is that a ceiling type light? Uh-huh. What about the lobby, front offices, foreman's office, and Mr. Cave's office? Did those offices have lights on in them that evening? No. Was there anyone working up in those offices that evening? Any secretarial help, file clerks, anything like that? No. When the girls are working in the evening at that hour, is the front door to your lobby left open? Yes. Where is it left open so that people coming from the street can walk into the lobby at that hour? No. Pardon me? No. 
Is that door locked? Yes. So it is possible to go from, say, the factory into the hall, an office and lobby area, because that door is unlocked. Is that correct? Yes. Is it impossible to go from the street into the lobby through the front door because that door is locked? Yes. Was it locked at that night, to your knowledge? Yes. When you stepped into the hall, why did you go into that hall? Well, I had to make a phone call. Where are the phones located? Well, there is one in each office. Is there any reason why you didn't use the one in the plant office? Yes. Why? I needed the phone number on my, of my day foreman, and the phone pad was in one of the offices in the plant, in the main office there. Would that be the office marked front office? No. It was actually in the other office, the foreman's, the foreman's office? Right. And you wanted to call Mr. Marin? Yes. When you came into the hall, what did you see? Well, as I walked in, I saw a shadow. And where was this shadow? Well, it was in the main office, kind of the front office, right. And whereabouts in the front office? Well, right in front of the door. Actually, at first, I thought it was my shadow when I walked in. I just saw it move, and that is all. Does the front office have a door with a glass in it? No. What kind of a door is on that front office? It's regular wooden doors, paneling. What happened after you saw the shadow? Well, I didn't pay too much attention because I thought it was my own shadow. So I walked in, I kind of pushed the door open, but it just didn't open all the way. The door of the front office? Yes. What was the problem? So. When I tried to push it open, it wouldn't go. So when I pressed on it, I felt something behind it. What happened then? I jumped back. Back into the hallway? Right. What happened then? I said, hey, you know, you had better come out. So somebody was in there, and I spoke to them. Now, who did you see in that front office? Well, I didn't see no one until they came out into the light. When they came out into the light, who did you see? The gentleman right there. Mr. Moore? Yes. Had you known him before May 12, 1972? Yes. In what capacity? He worked in the next plant. About how many times had you seen Mr. Moore in the course of your work or in the course of his work? Maybe two, three times a night. I didn't understand what you said. Two or three times per night? Right. Now, when you saw Mr. Moore in the front office, did you say anything to him? Well, at first I was scared. I just said, what made you scared? We have to articulate things. Well, I didn't know who it was back behind the door. So when he walked in the light and I knew who he was, he just said, don't tell on me, Tony. Did he use your name, Tony? Yes. Do you remember what he was wearing that evening? Yes. What? He had black boots and dungarees brown leather jacket, brown gloves, and there was grease on the gloves and his face. Did he say anything to you other than, don't tell on me, Tony? Yes. What? He told me he had a record. Did he say anything else? No. What did you say? I just told him to leave. He had better leave, and that was all. Now, after you told him to leave, did you stay right around there and watch him leave? No. I just left. I just walked out. Why did you leave? Well, I didn't know if he had a weapon or something. I don't know, you know. So I just left out the door. What door did you leave? The front door going to the factory. So you went into the door into the factory, right? And you left Mr. Moore standing there in the hall? Yes. About how long were you face to face with Mr. Moore in the hall? Oh, maybe 60 seconds at the most. What did you do when you went back to the factory? Well, I walked out and I talked to one of the girls. I just said I had a problem and I didn't know how to solve it. Did you say anything else about your problem? No, ma'am. Is that the only thing you said to the girl? Right. What did you do after that? I just walked out. I had to check the soft water and that was part of your responsibility? Right. So I walked out of the plant and I checked the water and I went back into the plant and called the day foreman. Did you then call the police? Right. Now, why is it that you went out to the water softener, called the day foreman, and then called the police? Well, I just didn't know what to do first. Why is it that you thought you had a problem? Well, because I knew the man. I just didn't know which way to go. 
You mean you didn't know whether to tell on a man that you knew or to pretend like you had not seen anything? Yes. You called Mr. Marin, is that correct? That is the day foreman? Yes. Why did you call him? Well, he is the day foreman, and I wanted to talk to him about there was a burglary. And right away, he said, call the police. And did you then call the police? Right. How long did it take for the police to come? Oh, approximately maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Do you know what time you called the police? Oh, it was about quarter of 10, roughly. Now, after you walked back into the factory area, when was it that you next came back into the office area of the plant? It was after George Marin came in. Was there any reason why you did not go back in to check out the offices? Yes, because I just didn't want to go in there. Why? Well, I didn't know if he was still in there or what. I just didn't want to walk in there. How long did it take for George Marin to get down there? Oh, approximately five minutes, maybe. Does he live close to the plant? Yes. Did you go back into the offices when Mr. Marin came? Yes. What did you see at that point? The desk drawer was open. There was trash on the floor, papers, books. Of which office, the main office, where the secretary is? What would be the front office on the diagram? Right. Did you go back into the foreman's office? Yes. What did you see there? There was the lock, the handle on the cabinet. It was busted, and that was it. Did you ever go out to the front door in the lobby area? The front door in the lobby area? Yes. Did you ever get a look at that that evening? Yes. When was that? The same time we was standing in the hallway. When you were standing in the hallway, would you point and put an X on that diagram where you were standing? Now, where was Mr. Moore standing? From where you put the X in the hallway there, are you saying that you could see the front door of the lobby that goes out to the street? Yes, I could see the top part of it. Did you see anything unusual about it at that time? No. At any time, did you go into the lobby itself, either when you called Mr. Merritt or when you called the police? Yes. He told me he broke the front door. That is when I walked and saw it. Who told you? The gentleman at the table. The defendant right there. When did he tell you that he had broken the front door? He told me he broke the front door and he told me he had a record at the same time. What words did he use to say this? Your Honor, I am going to object. The question has been asked and answered, overruled. Can you remember his exact words that he used to say this? He just said I came in through the front door. And then he didn't say he broke it? Well, I can't remember exactly. No further questions. Well, let me ask you this. Does this room called the front office have walls that go clear to the ceiling or are they just those partitions that separate it off? It goes up to the ceiling, but it has a great big window in the front. You can see into the lobby. Where is that window between those two marks on the wall, between the lobby and the front office? Yes, right there, the two marks. That is where the window is. That is not a door, that is a window. Yes, it's a great big window. And from where you were standing, you could look through the door of the office and out the window and see the front door of the building, the top of the window of the glass door that was there, the front door going out to the street. Right. I see. All right. Go ahead. Mr. Bland, why were you going into the office to call the plant foreman and day foreman that evening? I was having problems with the machines. Do you have a procedure where you call the day foreman when you have a problem with the machines? Yes. Are you normally responsible for night security or is there someone else there that is also responsible? No, I am. Do you know what time it was when you went up to the front office to make the phone call? I would say it was about a quarter after nine. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Yes. I direct counsel's attention to page 18, line 11 of the transcript. I wonder if you would read this to yourself. Now, is uh, what you read an accurate statement of your testimony at the preliminary hearing? Is that a true record of what you said at the preliminary hearing? Yes. And did you indicate then that it was approximately 9.30 to a quarter to 10? Probably. 
How long after this burglary was this preliminary hearing held? I guess about a week, I think. Would you say that your memory was better then of the events than now? Yes. So would you say that this time is more likely to be accurate than 915? Yes. When you left this building, you indicated you went and talked to some secretaries, is that right? No. Some girls, the girls in the shop. How long did you talk to them? Maybe, I actually only said a couple of words, maybe 30 seconds to a minute. Didn't you testify at the preliminary hearing that it was about three to four minutes? I don't think so. That you talked to the girls? May I have just a moment, Your Honor? Perhaps I am in error. All right. Directing counsel's attention to page 15, lines 19 through 26. I wonder if the witness would read that to himself. You indicated about three minutes. Is that right at the preliminary? Right. Well, is this true? That your testimony was at the preliminary hearing? Yes. So that was what you said then? Right. And so it could have been that long? Right. Now, at any time when you talked to these girls, did you say anything other than, I have got a problem, that was all? You didn't discuss the problem with them? No. You didn't tell them that you thought you had seen somebody you knew? No. Weren't you a little bit excited at that particular time? Yes, I was nervous. Where did you go from there? After you talked to the girls, I walked out to the soft water outside of the plant, and you worked on the soft water. I just had to check in. You checked the soft water, the water softener, right. And did you call the day foreman? Yes, and then the police. Directing counsel's attention to page 16, lines 19 through 21, particularly the answer at page 16, line 19. Now, is it true that at the preliminary hearing, you testified before going to the water softener, you called the police? It was in between the water softener and talking to the girls that I called at the sheriff's department. Is that what you testified to at the preliminary hearing? Yes. <clears throat> And flashlight, Mr. Bland, B-L-A-N-D, preliminary hearing. <coughs> okay, ready? 180, cross by defense. What shift did the defendant work when he worked at that location? Well, approximately until 6, 7, 7.30, 8, I don't know. Did he work in the same building that you did? No. How far was the building where he worked from where you worked? Maybe 100 feet. Did you supervise him? No. Do you know how long he worked there? I would say approximately four months. Anywhere in the building, did